Northern Ireland divided by its history. The division is cultural, it is political, it can be defined as religious, Catholic and Protestant. It is also educational. Some 98% of Catholic children are in Catholic schools. Around the same proportion of Protestant children are in state schools. Now, as options for change in Northern Ireland ebb and flow, in state education new moves are underway. Integrated schools with a proper balance of Catholic and Protestant are being encouraged by the government. It's at this school, Brownlow High, that the issues come to the crunch. This is the first state school ever to apply to be integrated. So it's here that the government's plan of deliberately encouraging one school for Catholic and Protestant children alike is being tested. And it's being tested very hard. Should a policy of social engineering in the interest of greater harmony prevail over the strongly held beliefs of a substantial number of parents? I think integrated schools are the only solution to Aaron's problems. It's the only way that people are ever going to get together. There's been that many movements towards um, togetherness and none of it works. The only way is get the kids when they're young, put them together, then they'll have no fear of each other and then they'll stay together for the rest of their lives. It'll take a couple of generations, but it'll eventually come. That's a very shallow uh, analysis of the troubles of Northern Ireland. It's justice and equality of treatment that the Catholic people want and they're not getting. And there would be a great danger you would have a sort of surface camaraderie going on between the schools that would ignore the deep questions of injustice and, in and inequality of treatment, discrimination, which have been dogged this uh, area part of Ireland since it was set up as a separate state. <laughs> Brownlow High is a mixed school. Catholic and Protestants already go there together. State schools are open to all, so at many of them there are a small number of Catholics. The ethos, however, remains Protestant, flying the Union Jack, celebrating Commonwealth Day, looking to Britain for its loyalties. When a school is integrated, it deliberately adopts a policy of honouring both Catholic and Protestant points of view. The first step at Brownlow was taken by a group of parents in 1987. They have now been balloted four times. Once was declared null, twice the vote didn't receive the required majority at the time. Then, in 1991, the needed majority was reduced to 50%. 68% voted for. There's a widespread feeling in the area the time is right to integrate. The application went to the Department of Education in April. A response is expected soon. Anne and Eamon Bowman are a mixed marriage. She, a Protestant from the Shanghill Road, he, a Catholic from the Falls Road. They had three children at the school. Not surprisingly, they're for integration at Brownlow. In a mixed school, the heritage isn't mentioned, um, the culture isn't mentioned. In, in an integrated school, both cultures are exploited. Both cultures are put on the table and examined, put on the microscope. You're a Catholic, there's the reason you're a Catholic. You're a Protestant, there's the reason you're a Protestant. This is what's happened to the country so far. Um, let the children see it themselves. And the children don't want to fight battles that are 200 years, 2,000 years old. They don't want to. It's the politicians and the churches in this country that's been keeping this going. It's time that the ordinary people actually had a look at it and decided for themselves. Brownlow is at the heart of Craig Avon, itself something of a social experiment. It was set up in 1969 as a new town between Lurgan and Portadown, but never attracted enough business to make it boom. Unemployment is high. It's largely a mixed town, but with some areas mostly Protestant, others mostly Catholic. Objections to integration are most vociferous where one community is ignorant or fearful of the other, so it's not surprising some children of Brownlow's different communities are bemused by the idea, even, understandably, wary of it. No, I wouldn't like it. Why? I don't know why. I wouldn't like being in Catholic you know, classes like RA and stuff like that because of what they think. I couldn't really take that, man. Because I'd been brought up in a Protestant school 
near all the time. And I've only met a couple of Catholics, like, but it's nothing really that I can do about it. I don't see them anymore. I can hardly even remember their names now. I have Protestant friends, so I have. Get on all right with them. Sometimes you can have too much friction between the two sides, and because they're just totally different, you know, it could make things very complicated. You think it'd be good? Is it would? Be better next time. Mary given and all. Sort out your differences. Uh, I think we're all very optimistic that there's a very bright future for integrated education in the province. And in particular, we feel quite confident that there's uh, plenty of backing for integrated education in this particular area. Uh, there have been a number of surveys done by independent people in the past, and they've all come up with the answer that there are, are big uh, numbers of both Catholic and Protestant parents who favour integrated education for their children, and we have no worries about the future for this school. Opposition to change at Brownlow is very much in the minority, but it's voiced for the Protestant community by Fred Crow, an official unionist on Craigavon Borough Council. He claims that the Catholic Lismore Comprehensive School along the road from Brownlow caters adequately for all Catholics, while some Protestants now feel that the only school they wanted their children to attend, Brownlow High, risks having its Protestant character dismantled. Some parents find themselves in a difficult situation where when they started attending the school in the first instance, uh, they, uh, the, the school was a normal state high school, but in, in between the goalposts have been changed and this integrated uh, system comes in. Uh, the problem is that uh, some of the parents find themselves in a situation that they can't take the children away without damaging the children's education. And so there will be parents at that school and children at that school who uh, do not want the system but find themselves stuck in it through no fault of their own. One such parent has agreed to talk to us of her dilemma. To voice protest in this community is seen by her as bringing risks. What I think will happen, I, maybe something to do with religious education, Parents are going to be complaining that a minister is in with Roman Catholic children or a priest is in with Protestant children. Parents are going to be at the school constantly trying to get this all stopped. You can't speak out here. If, if you do, a child in school can suffer from other children, from the teachers possibly. A, I could be threatened. It's all different sorts of intimidation because if you speak out against it. Your child isn't really wanted at Brownlow if you're not for integration. You feel you'll be victimised, yeah? I do indeed, yes. How realistic is that fair? <clears throat> it was very realistic. I mean, if uh, I know of one parent that has been threatened and uh, just sort of give up. But why should we have to suffer all the time, those that should be able to come out and say what we want to say against it and that we can't do that. We have went out of our way to, to see people and waylay their fears. If people have fears, we want them to come to us and tell us. We've went and visited people in their home and went out of our way and asked them, you know, what's the problem? Why are you against it? Um, if we can help you, we'll help you. Give us a chance. <laughs> the idea of integrated schooling in the province is not new. Back in 1973, a group of Catholic parents formed All Children Together to express their wish to have their Catholic children educated alongside children of other denominations. But their long and determined struggle to make it possible was fought throughout the 70s outside the state system. Cecilia Lenehan was one of the founders. I remember travelling down to the south of Ireland with my mother in the train one time and saying, you know, uh, we've, we've a wonderful gift in our Catholic faith. And it seems to me if you have something that you really treasure, you share it. Um, and she said, so what's in your mind? And I said, well, I'd like to see our children growing up with the, the Protestant children, that, that are, who are their friends anyway. And uh, I said, I honestly can't think that they lose their faith if they see us practicing. Because the church authorities had maintained always, worldwide of course, that Catholic children should be in Catholic schools. The Catholic Church gave them no help. As devout Catholics, the parents had to prepare their children for confirmation outside Catholic schools. 
In 1974, the press publicized the fact that the sacrament of confirmation had been withheld by the Catholic Church from such children. The news drew sympathy from Protestant parents. From then on, the movement became interdenominational. Then, in 1978, they got a bill passed in Parliament that enabled schools to go integrated. But the act simply lay dormant. Neither church school nor state school took it up. Nothing daunted, in 1981, all children together made their boldest move of all. They founded their own school, Lagan College. If we were learning this kind of neither church nor state was going to do this for us. And we were growing up, we were growing up fast and thinking, well, we'll give it a whirl, we'll, we'll stick with it for another couple of years in the hopes that somebody might, if, if somebody had started the ball rolling, you know, there was a possibility it would have spread. Also, we knew that, that to start a school was an absolutely massive undertaking financially. We didn't know about the time at that stage, but anyway. Um, and we were very definite that, that we had our feet in the ground and if we were developing integrated schools, we didn't want them to be up there and elitist. We wanted them to be part of the system. Lagan College is a success, but it was not a government initiative. It took charitable trusts to get it off the ground. It didn't qualify for government money until 1984. It wasn't until 1989 that the Education Reform Order wrote integrated education into the state system. Today, Lagan College has 650 pupils, 41 teachers, balanced at around 60-40 Protestants to Catholics, though no quotas as such are aimed for. This year sees the first generation of its sixth formers leaving school. The new building, costing £3.5 million, opens in September, the same month Brownlow hopes to go integrated. It has got to be good sense that a school is, is opting to transform itself, to become integrated. I think it's wonderful. It is every bit as significant a development as Lagan College itself was. It is a flagship of another kind. Hello, dear. Don't hello, dear me. You're half an hour late. The move by Brownlow School has now broadened the education debate across Northern Ireland. Opinions against integration tend to divide along the old traditional differences. With the Protestant tradition goes a loyalty to Britain and the Union Jack. Support for unionist politicians, rugby played in schools. Catholic loyalties look to their Irish past, vote nationalist, tend to play Gaelic sports. Each is a sum total of many cultural particulars that make up its own almost tribal identity. The eroding of any of it threatens the cohesion and the continuity of each community. In 1921, when the Northern Ireland Parliament was set up, Catholics steadfastly retained their own schools. They paid for doing so in financial penalties. Even today, Protestant schools get £450 state funding per pupil. Catholic schools get only £210. Father, we rejoice... In today, 47.5% of the province's secondary schools are Catholic. ...of Jesus, your son, Catholic parents are obliged, and it's a serious obligation, with obliged in conscience, the teaching of the church, to send their children to Catholic schools where these exist and where they are good. We are concerned with the formation of the children's minds and their, their ideas on God and Jesus Christ and morality. And, and let me say that it's getting increasingly difficult. I can see after 33 years teaching in this school, it's increasingly difficult to pass over the totality of Christ's message and way of life that comes from the teaching of Christ against the secularization of the modern world, against the TV, if you don't mind me saying so, and against those tremendous forces which are bearing in on the children. And therefore, we need the full resources of the Catholic school as it has existed with its traditions and experience to put over that message of Christ. But what nonetheless, I mean, uh, church what? leaders must address a proposal that is made in the interests of justice and harmony. Th they must respond to that. Yes, but if it is a proposal which interferes with the primacy of the Catholic school as the prime instrument of passing on the fullness of Catholic teaching, 
and the fullness of the sacramental system and the, and the, attend, and the, the understanding of the Mass and the, the mystery of the Mass, the, the integrated school tends to cut across the primary duties and obligations of a Catholic bishop or, a Catholic, or the Catholic parish priests. So, I mean, it's, a, it's very much is in the hypni place, if I may put it that way, the consideration of the usefulness of the integrated school for solving the problems. Because if you don't train children to be good and to be moral and to say their prayers and to love their neighbour, of which I hope the Catholic parish, the Catholic uh, school, is the instrument. I hope. I mean, we, we, we fail very much sometimes in these matters. But that is the, the, the prime instrument that has been proven over the centuries. I can understand Father Fall saying that. I, I perfectly understand his position. But what I would like to see done, if it were possible, is to tease out, to, ex to, uh, to scout around, to see are there any conditions in which the kind of thing that Father Fall wants to see in his school can be maintained in a different kind of situation. Now, it may be impossible, but at least I would like us to, uh, I think, way back in 1980 or thereabouts, the English Catholic bishops said that they would be prepared or they would be ready to uh, explore how mixed schools could be developed on good religious and educational grounds other than pragmatic grounds. And I think uh, if they were prepared to do that, I would like to see that kind of preparedness over here, both on the Catholic side and on the Protestant side. I think there's a lot of work to be done in the, in the whole area of research. But to some extent, uh, people on the periphery of theological debate have got caricatures of what belief is all about. And I think there is a real need to ask ourselves just exactly what we really believe, what we must hold on to, where we differ. I'm glad to say that in recent years there has been uh, an attempt to um, begin this theological debate that I think is really necessary. And one of the things that I have discovered as I have mixed in Catholic circles and uh, seen how Catholics worship is the tremendous amount of similarity there is. I look at my Methodist communion service. I used to think that that was a, a carryover from the Church of England. But now I've discovered that it's a carryover from something way back for long before that. And as we begin to look at what we really believe, we, we begin to see that it just didn't start with me as a Methodist with John Wesley. It didn't start with Martin Luther or John Calvin. It goes right back to the beginning of the church. And very frequently I have discovered that I have far more in common with my Catholic brothers and sisters than I certainly realized when I was a boy of 15 or 16. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, We're having a special assembly this morning. Of we... all Catholic and Protestant differences in Northern Ireland, the least of them would now seem to be religious. After all, they see themselves as denominations of one religion, Christianity, and one saviour, Jesus Christ. Recently, both sides agreed a common core curriculum in religious education, which, if approved by the Department of Education, will be taught at all the province's schools, with each, Catholic and Protestant, adding extra teaching of their own. So RE, religious education, may not be as central to the education debate as matters such as Gaelic, that's to say Irish sports, and the teaching of history. I put it to Brownlow's headmaster, how would an integrated school teach the Battle of the Boyne? I think you can present the facts as you can determine them. I think that's the, you know, the evidential approach. Determine what you can from sources, whether they're first-hand sources or from you know, books of the time or newspapers of the time or whatever evidence. I'm not a historian, but whatever evidence they use in history lessons, they try to take contemporary accounts or whatever they can find and lead the children to see the thing from the point of view of somebody who's... Uh, living at the time as best they can and making their own, their own mind up in the end about what the rights and wrongs of it were. The intention of integrated education is not to mould pupils into some consensual half-and-half -half kind of citizens, though that, of course, is what the Protestants and the Catholics both fear. The aim is to cherish within the one school the full richness of the Catholic Church alongside the full richness of the Protestant tradition. The question is, can that be achieved without in some way watering down each of them? What are the conditions that are essential to ensure that the essential things are not watered down and diminished? Uh, I'm not in a position to say uh, 
what can be done and what should be done. All that I am determined to say and would wish to say is I would like other people to talk with me about the things that we want to maintain. We have our politicians at the moment in precisely the same situation. The SDLP are asking for certain things in the new arrangement that will not water down their nationalism. The unionists are asking for certain things that will not water down their unionism. And they, as uh, uh, John Hume says so frequently, we've got to address that problem and to find out what are the conditions in which both those traditions can be maintained. The basis of integrated education for us would be that a child who comes with a nationalist identity will leave with a nationalist identity. We're not trying to make them into unionists. I'm not trying to make unionists into nationalists, but at the least they would have some basis for, some fairly uh, impartial basis for putting their, their rest and their opinions on. You don't want to change nationalists into um, unionists, you say, or the other way around. But what influence do you want to have on how they see themselves? We want, I think, to give them a, an understanding of the fact that although the fellow sitting beside you is not the same religion or culture or political view as yourself, he's a very nice human being, he's a decent fellow, he's uh, worth living beside, you can, you can work with him. Listening to pupils at Lagan College talking about each other demonstrates that what Brownlow's headmaster hopes for is already a reality. Whenever I first came to school, you know, everything was kind of new. I was wanting to find out, you know, more about Catholics and stuff, and I used to chat to my RE teacher, you know, about it, you know, because I just wanted to know what the differences in religion were, because Catholic religion is quite close to, you know, you know, Protestant religion. I mean, I've only once had an argument, and it was with Eleanor, but it wasn't really an argument, it was more discussion. And we were talking about, you know, I was saying, you know, both sides just need to get together and, and you know, talk, and that would be it. And, you know, Eleanor was going, no, because, you know, this side wants this, this side wants that, and, you know, no one's prepared to back down. I can see both points of view, but it does make me, you know, sort of annoyed that it's such a problem. So when you're talking to your friend Rachel here about it, do you hope that your point of view will influence her a little? Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm quite, uh, I can be quite pushy with my views, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, but... So can Rachel, so I don't think that it would make much difference to her view, except maybe I could make her understand my view more. Do you feel, when you're doing history lessons, for example, do you feel yourself identified as British, or do you feel drawn to being Irish? Oh, I think yeah, I would tend to say I'm British, but um, Ireland's like a different country and England's like a different country. I would rather be known as Northern Irish more than identified with one of the two countries which the fighting's about. But what about you, Brendan? I'd say uh, probably Irish. And yet you are Northern Irish just like James. Yeah. It's tricky for you, isn't it? Yeah. Do you understand his point of view? Yes. Yeah. Sure, I like, I would identify more with Britain. He, because it, I suppose because I'm Protestant. And we love the Queen and they love the Pope, so <laughs> they identify with Ireland. But does that open up a division between you? No. See, you, when you come to school, you learn that the divisions just come down. You're friends. They're just people. It's great to hear young people being so idealistic, but are they being wise or are they being naive? The experiment at Lagan College has gone on for 10 years now, so is it working? I've come here to Queen's University to talk to someone who studies conflict resolution. It's a great subject to study in Northern Ireland, conflict resolution. The Northern Ireland conflict is just the same in certain respects as tribal conflict, racial conflict, uh, ethnic conflict that one might find anywhere else in the world insofar as it's all group conflict and group conflicts are at root a manifestation of group e egoism, an egoism which is in each and every one of us. So what did your report discover? It discovered that if the children go to an integrated secondary school, then they may come into the school with very polarized friendships, far more friends in their, their own community than in the other. But by the time they leave the secondary school, in the case of Lagan College, they actually have more friends in the other community than they do in their own, which was quite a surprising result. 
No single solution solves the problem, but it goes a great deal towards solving the problem. Surely, if uh, Catholics count a lot of Protestants as their best friends, and Protestants count a lot of Catholics as their best friends, and children coming out of the segregated schools don't do that to the same extent, and surely there's been a change in the society. I don't see how... It seems a logical necessity to me that that's the case. One long-term fear in a number of specific communities is of mixed marriages. They can be seen as softening the barriers between the two communities and thus slowly eroding the primacy of group loyalty in marriage, a loyalty that guarantees the next generation. I'm continually dealing with situations in homes where there has been these mixed marriages and they have been a disaster and wives are left with two or three children and the man is away off to Lingen. The tensions within that this brings uh, within homes. First of all, uh, you have uh, when, a, when you have a wedding ceremony, down one side of the church you have the Protestants and you have the Roman Catholics down the other side and they're just about two or three of them might shake hands going out. You know, uh, to, in marriage today, it's difficult enough to keep marriages together. As you know, we're a mixed marriage and in my own personal views, I think it's a good idea. I want my own children to grow up with the view that people of different religions are no different or no better than themselves and they're no better than anyone else. So what do they make of the row in Northern Ireland that, is, that divides Well, to them, them it's very mysterious. They can't understand it because they can see us living together here and uh, as a whole in Craigavon. We all live together here in Craigavon. There's no problem here either. But when they look at the news and they see things happening, really it is very hard for them to understand. The mood in the province now is that there has, after years of suffering, to be some kind of coming together. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Mm, why can't we live together? Tell me why, tell me why. In education, there is another way, well short of integrated schooling, that's already being tried. It's called Education for Mutual Understanding. It encourages contacts, exchange visits, joint outings, explanatory lectures, but it allows schools to remain segregated. It finds favour in Catholic and Protestant schools alike, so naturally it's being tried on a much greater scale than integration. You have to have dialogue. You're going to have dialogue in integrated schools by all means, but uh, you can also have dialogue in segregated schools, and in fact that's been tried at the moment. If you think about it, there's a, there's a program, uh, in fact it's now compulsory in schools, called Education for Mutual Understanding. And it seems to me that that, pro that particular program is premised on the notion that if you change attitudes, structures will follow as a consequence. And that is operating in schools at the moment. The integration schools seem to be going at it from another perspective, where they say, well, we'll change structures, and hopefully attitudes will change as a result. I have absolutely no idea which one of those is likely to prove the most effective, except one might be tempted to say that if it's a success in segregated schooling within the segregated structures, then simply because of the numbers involved, you're likely to have more effect. I certainly don't believe that Education for mutual understanding, which is just contact screams once in a while, um, and curriculum development on a sort of more pluralistic uh, agenda, uh, that just doesn't have the same effect as children having to spend years together in school, establishing peer groups across the divide that separates them, and working out their differences as they become adults. Given that so far only 1% of children in Northern Ireland are at integrated schools, given the practical geographical problems of mixing children from different areas, are they to be bussed, for example, and given that no one wants integration forced on people, what are the prospects for this initiative gaining in strength? Segregated schools in, in exist in Northern Ireland because the majority of pa parents in Northern Ireland wish their children to go to segregated schools. That's the reality. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, integrated schools will provide an alternative to that. But uh, my own view would be that they will only ever cater for a minority of school-going children. The whole curriculum in Northern Ireland is changing. So whether your child is going to an integrated school or not, 
And that's laid down enshrined legislation. They are going to have to study about the Catholic faith. They're going to have to study Irish heritage. They're going to have to study Scottish heritage. They're going to have to study cultural heritage. So that it's not as strange as it would have been three or four years ago. Somebody had the vision that an integrated school system, and it's now got government encouragement, will look forward to a solution. If you reject it, what is your vision of moving forward? Well, my vision is justice. Justice, justice, justice. You can't say it enough times in Northern Ireland. The problem is not the border. The problem is that you've had a rotten system of government here which is not given justice to the Catholic people in terms of jobs, even the funding of our education. A recent report has shown it's £72 million pounds we've been deprived of in the last 20 years. This school of mine is getting half the funds that some of the large uh, grammar school, Protestant grammar schools are getting per pupil out of the public purse to educate its children. I mean, let's have a bit of justice here. That's the key word in the world at the moment. And don't be pussyfooting around with the integrated schools and so on. Get down to the business of equality of treatment for all the people, protection for their lives, security, and particularly justice for the Catholic people who have been discriminated against because of their religion and because of their political aspirations. I think everybody's got to concede. Everybody's got to concede. That this is the whole problem of Northern Ireland. It's a willingness to... Compromise is a dirty word, of course, over here. But it's a willingness to ask oneself now... What is necessary that I can achieve a reasonable kind of life, a reasonable kind of faith, a reasonable kind of relationship with other people? If that were perceived as conceding a tenet of one's faith, that would indeed be an immoral act. Indeed. Uh, one of the pet phrases in Protestantism is no surrender. And um, both sides say no in Northern Ireland. And yet you can say no for very good reasons. But I think you've got to find better reasons for saying yes. So far, indications are that children at integrated schools face conflict and differences with straightforward confidence rather than with violence or hostility. It may prove that such attitudes are what it takes to underpin a way forward in Northern Ireland. People just believe the Protestant way is right or the Catholic way is right and they won't understand the other side's view. Their mind is just one way. So you'll, you'll be like that forever if you don't have integrated schools. If everyone went to school like we did, even for only one year, I'm sure they would see things differently because I don't think that the problem here will be solved, solved overnight. I mean, you can't just say, oh, right, well, this is it, and that's the way it's going to be. But if people understood each other's problems, then they might you know, be able to compromise. Mm -hmm.